This video is going to look at giant ionic structures and the key physical properties of giant ionic structures. So a giant structure is essentially a 3D lattice, um, a structure which has a very regular repeating pattern of millions of individual particles and that pattern repeating through those millions of individual particles. And those particles are bonding together. They are chemically bonded together. And chemical bonding, in essence, is just simply some form of strong electrostatic force of attraction between those particles. The type of bond is dictated by what the particles involved are. Uh, and these electrostatic attractions will extend throughout the entire lattice structure, which often underpins the key properties of giant structures. In the case of giant ionic structures, we're talking about ionic bonding. Now, ions are simply charged atoms or charged molecules, atoms or molecules that have gained an overall charge through either losing or gaining electrons into the outermost shell of the atoms involved. In this particular example, this is sodium oxide, we have sodium ions. They are positively charged because those, because those sodium atoms have lost one electron from the outermost shell of those atoms during the chemical reaction, leaving them with an overall positive charge because there's an imbalance between protons and electrons in favour of protons of one. And the oxide ion is a negative ion because the oxygen atom has gained during the chemical reaction two electrons into its valence or outermost shell, giving it an overall charge of two minus because there's an imbalance of charge between protons and electrons of two negative, two more electrons than um, that were you know, ba balancing proton number. Now, what's the definition of uh, ionic bonding? It is a strong electrostatic force of attraction between oppositely charged ions. As soon as these ions come into being, it is a fundamental um, rule of nature that oppositely charged particles attract strongly together. So these positive cations attract towards this negative anion in the center. These sodium ions attract that oxide ion and we form two strong ionic bonds, which are my green arrows here and here, which are strong electrostatic forces of attraction between the oppositely charged ions. Now, if we are talking about a giant ionic structure or an ionic compound, there will be not just one or two, but millions or even billions of these strong attractions taking place within the structure itself. And that will help to explain some of the key properties of giant ionic structures. Now, the first key property I want to focus on is their high melting points. Okay, so this small diagram here is a representation of a small area of a much larger lattice structure. Each of these double arrows represents one ionic bond. And you can see very quickly that even in very small sections of a giant ionic lattice, there are a lot of ionic bonds. So if you think about an ionic compound like sodium chloride or magnesium bromide, they are often solids at room temperature. And the reason for that is because there will be many strong electrostatic forces of attraction between the oppositely charged ions throughout that giant lattice structure. And you're going to require a lot of heat energy to melt that structure, i.e. a lot of heat energy to overcome and break those many strong electrostatic forces of attraction between the oppositely charged ions throughout the lattice. And that's why they have high melting points. For example, sodium chloride has a melting point of 801 degrees centigrade, way beyond anything your Bunsen burners can do. I want to be more specific here and look at um, two comparative examples of giant ionic structures. This is sodium fluoride versus calcium oxide. Now you'll notice that, so, uh, that calcium oxide has a higher melting point than sodium fluoride. Now, why would that be? They're both giant ionic structures. So what's the difference? Well, if you look at the charges involved, calcium ions have a two plus charge and oxide ions have a two minus charge, whereas sodium ions are only one plus and fluoride ions only one minus. So it seems to be the case that the greater the magnitude or size of the ionic charge, the stronger the electrostatic attractions formed between their ions and therefore the greater amount of energy be required to overcome those attractions and melt the structures. And that makes sense. Bigger charges, stronger attractions, greater melting points. Now, the second property I want to look at is the conductivity of giant ion structures. And it turns out that they do not conduct electricity when they are solid. And that should make sense because for an electrical current to flow, OK, you need, ion, you need the charged particles to be able to move. So um, for an electrical current to flow in ionic compounds, you need the ions, these electrically charged 
um, particles to be free to move to conduct the current. But think about the structure itself. As I said, this is my small representation again. There's no way the ions inside this structure, the solid, can actually move. Okay, so the ions are being held in fixed rigid positions within the giant ionic lattice by those strong electrostatic forces of attraction between the ions themselves. They're not going to be moving anywhere. But if we do apply enough heat energy to break those strong electrostatic force of attraction. So when we melt a giant ionic structure, we apply enough heat energy to completely break all of the strong electrostatic force of attraction between those ions, then the ions are free to move. If they're free to move, they are free to conduct an electrical current. Now the same is true if we dissolve giant ionic structures. Many giant ionic structures, many ionic compounds dissolve in water. And the reason for that is because water is described as a polar molecule. Uh, due to uh, the uneven distribution of electrons inside water molecules due to a factor called electronegativity difference, they always have small partial charges associated with the water molecules themselves. You can see those partial charges drawn in my molecules here. That means that water molecules can actually attract and towards ions. And actually, when they do this, they can disrupt uh, the ionic interactions between the ions themselves. This can help to break up the giant ionic lattice through the interaction of the water molecules as they overcome the electrostatic attractions between the ions themselves. That's quite technical, I know. But the key fact I want to emphasize which is really important here, is that it has the same outcome as with the melting. The ions, once dissolved, become free to move, free to flow, and therefore can conduct an electrical current. So both outcomes result in the flow of ions and therefore the creation of electrical current. I just quickly want to expand upon the solubility of ionic compounds in water. Only briefly, as I said before, water molecules are polar due to differences in electronegativity within the molecules. They have uh, these uh, partial charges. They have a smaller magnitude than the ionic charges themselves, but they can disrupt um, these uh, ionic uh, attractions. And then the water molecules surround the ions, which causes them to be dissolved. OK, so once they break down a giant ionic lattice, the water molecules surround the ions, preventing them from re, uh, rejoining together through attractions, and therefore they stay dissolved. Um, but it does depend on how strong the ionic interactions are. Um, some ionic compounds with large ionic charges will not dissolve uh, because their attractions, their, their strong electrostatic attractions are just, are just too strong for the water molecules to uh, disrupt, to, to overcome. But if they can, they will, and ions, ionic compounds will dissolve in water. Now, the final property uh, I want to talk about for uh, giant ionic structures is their brittleness. OK, they are crystalline structures. And when uh, large forces are applied to them, uh, sorry about my little scruffy line here. When large forces are applied to them, they will um, shatter uh, and crack and break. So imagine I applied a force, a lateral force to this crystalline structure here. OK, this layer here, for example, you can see the result is it moves the layer across slightly. Now, that's not very good for a giant ionic structure because you can see what happens is the misalignment of those layers causes two positive ions and two negative ions to be in much closer proximity. Now, that increased repulsion of like charges will result in a shearing effect, a breaking away of those layers, and that hence will cause a shattering of the crystal structure itself and the brittle nature of ionic compounds. Uh, so that summarizes the key properties of giant ionic structures.